and then you'll just keep your eye on the waiting room and let board members or public in? Yes. When you see them. Okay, yes. so there's David. Okay. Hi, everyone. So good evening and welcome to the Zoom edition of the Northampton Planning Board. On May 14th, we have two public hearings tonight. Um, the first play, the first hearing, let me catch up with myself, is a 7 p.m. site plan review by backyard ADUs for detached residential unit in the rear of 73 North, North Main Street, Florence. Map ID 17C247. Um, there are still a few planning board members um, not here yet. But as they come in, Carolyn, uh, the staff person will let them into the room. We do have enough people for a quorum in case we get to that point where we're ready to uh, vote on this site plan, we can still move forward. So does the applicant have a uh, presentation for us? Can I just um, ask, yeah. did you wanna do public comment first on general items in case there was anybody here that might be interested in that? Thank you. Okay. okay. Is there anyone in the Zoom room now who has a public comment that could come before this board that's not related to either of the public hearings before us tonight? Well, it's a public hearing on North Main Street and also a public hearing on Kingsley Avenue. Okay, hearing none, we'll, we'll move forward to our first public hearing um, for 73 North Main Street. Can I just interject for a second? Um, I clicked the wrong link in the agenda. There's like a the top link, which was for the previous zoning board meeting. Uh, sorry, another, I guess it was a ZBA hearing. Um, and I just got a text from Marissa that she did the same thing. Is there any way to check if there's people who are trying to get into the wrong room? It's pretty confusing in the agenda, I think. Um, yeah, I just let Marissa in. Um, I can, I don't see anybody else um, waiting. The other, it's curious that, because um, the other meeting was ended. So um, I, I thought, I, I would go. think it would just give a message, but it didn't give a message. Yeah, it just says that that meeting is still going on or something. I, I uh, mean, I don't know okay. if there's anything to do for this week, but maybe for yeah. next week, just make it a little more obvious. Um, in the agenda. That I have that, that problem the last meeting. When I was trying to connect, there was another meeting going on. Would okay. it make sense to send out the email to this meeting to the board members that aren't here yet, just with just that link, just in case any of them are having that problem now? Yeah, so um, hang on just a minute. Let me just see. <clears throat> so the only um. person um, so Krista definitely cannot make it. So um, that means we are missing just one person. Um, sorry, Let's see. Um, so um, and I don't know if I heard. Um, oh no! So Krista said she wasn't able to make it. So I think we're all set. Yep. So we should be good to go. Okay. George? Looks like George is frozen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know how there's an unmute? I don't think there's an unfreeze. <laughs> can, can Alan uh, step in to keep us moving? Ooh. Um, that, that should probably wake George up. <laughs> that isn't new. Um, yeah. I can uh, just <clears throat> give him a quick text. Um, okay, 
So, okay, he's back. It looks like. George, yeah, are you back? <laughs> oh, you're on mute. Okay. Okay. That's my bandwidth there. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, um, you know, I think um, we're all here. All right. So why don't we proceed with the uh, uh, presentation by the applicant of the 73 North Main Street proposal. And that would either be the homeowners or, or their architect or engineer. Um, Chris, are you uh, there? Can you unmute or would you like me to unmute you? I, I am unmuted. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. You muted me. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Chris, and I'm representing the homeowners in, uh, from Backyard ADUs. Uh, we've been working with Phil and Valley to create a backyard home for their son, Aiden, um, on their lot just outside of downtown Florence. Uh, we're looking to build a, uh, an 830 square foot home uh, that Aiden will live in uh, as he's just turning 24. Um, and we think it's a great spot to do it, uh, certainly for the, the initial use and for the long-term use and in, in infill development for East Hampton, given its proximity to the bike path, walking distance from downtown, um, and, and really the, the, the low impact to the neighbors and surrounding neighborhoods. Um, we're, we know there are questions on the significant trees. Uh, which this project is going up against and will be disturbing some of them. Uh, so we were looking forward to your questions about that and any other concerns that you might have or, or questions and clarifications. So I'll turn it, I'll turn it over to you. This is 73 um, North, right? Yes. 73. <clears throat> okay. Thanks. Um, and I guess I haven't, done this virtually I can do a screen share as well if, if we want to walk if you want me to walk you through the site plan specifically um, I'm, I'm definitely open to that I, I think that would be helpful just yeah. to orient all the board members to the, the lot where the existing house is where the new house will be okay let me uh, so I have I just host is uh, Carolyn can you um, Yep, I'll, I'll share my, I'll co-host you so that you can share your screen. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, is that loaded for everybody? Yeah, I can see. Yep. Okay. So I'll start zoomed out and then I'll kind of zoom in and point out certain things. Um, so this is the zoomed out view of, of the property and the, the, the neighbor's homes. Um, and you see the, the primary houses in each of the neighbor's yards are pushed up to the front. Um, and we're proposing to, to build uh, this, new, this new small home uh, towards the rear of their yard adjacent to the neighbor's two car garage. Um, and kind of a, a wild area that's not mowed grass, it should say a wild vegetated space. Um, we're planning to uh, create this and um, have a, a new path, which is going to connect the house to the main house and to the driveway uh, where there is ample parking. Um, um, I believe we have five or six spots, depending on how you would count the overflow parking that's typical on the grass in, in this space. Um, and, and a lot of space in the backyard. Uh, so we chose this, this spot in particular, we, we looked at going a little bit further back towards the rear setback or a little bit further forward. Uh, we chose this spot in particular because uh, it would allow us to keep the existing barn in this back corner, which is well built. Um, and uh, the homeowners see that as potentially being space for Aiden and his friends to uh, congregate on occasion. And they're putting some work into that to fix the roof um, and, and various things. Um, we have, since we met with uh, Bartlett Tree, uh, we were talking with the arborist named Kevin, um, adjusted some of the, the, the plans on here, spe specifically the where we're running the utilities. 
uh, Kevin had a concern with, uh, we were originally going to try to uh, keep all of them outside of the basement and do trenching right in between the house and significant tree one and two, which would have had us within five feet of the bases and put those trees at risk. Um, so we, we decided to pull them as far over as possible. Uh, so we're right up against uh, their deck. Um, we don't want to have to rip up the, the deck and rebuild that uh, due to cost. Um, and with water and sewer trenching, we don't think it's, uh, it would be, it would take a lot of time and labor uh, to dig by hand underneath that deck. Uh, we do think, however, we can get the electrical trench under there, which will allow us to stay a little bit further away from the trees as we don't have to go as deep with, with electrical. Um, with, the, with the Arborist Report, trees number four and five, uh, which are directly adjacent to the location of the house. Um, it has been brought up that there is, that at 10 feet, we will be putting those two trees at risk. Um, and we'd like to be at 10 feet uh, in line with the existing house uh, to create a better space in the rear yard. And so we're not crowding that barn. Um, and we have, we have been discussing, we haven't put final plans together on how we'll replace those trees. Um, but in the rear yard along the fence on this dirt maintenance road uh, in front of the mills, uh, there is room to plant uh, several trees. Uh, we think we can probably replace at least half of the caliper that's taken out. I think we're at, we'll, we'll probably need to replace half of 52 inches. Uh, and then we, we think we can do a lot of that with a, um, a, a dwarf spruce hedge or some thick evergreen uh, type tree that will grow uh, 12, 15 feet tall um, and potentially more in the front yard. Uh, other thing I'll point out on this site plan, uh, there is a drop in grade going into the rear yard. Uh, we lose about five feet from where, uh, from where the, the main house is. Um, and what that's requiring us to do is to add a septic pump uh, to, get the, uh, to get sewage back up the hill and into the city sewer. I think with that, that's, I think those are the highlights of the, uh, of the site plan. Are there, is there anything specific on here anyone would like me to drill into in more detail? Planning board members have any questions at this point? No. Can I, can I may I ask a question? Just to understand. Uh, so this whole, why the, the new construction has to be sacrifice these two trees, four and five, can the, the constructor come down? But you you yeah, why do we have to, the reason to bring the three, four and five, that's what I'm suggesting, right? Uh, so the, the, the tree, re the arborist report says number four and five yeah. will have a severe impact by placing the house here. Um, and with the, with the, the trenching that we're doing being further back. Um, his report says that one, two, and three are not expected to be adversely impacted. But but it cannot move the structure further down toward the, the, the barn, right? That's what it is. Th that, that is that is the question at hand. Um, we we like to preserve a little bit of distance between the the existing barn and this new and this new house, um, so we don't uh, basically it's, it's for aesthetics and it's also uh, we don't want to get them too too close together so you can access the space behind um, the the new house where there, there's a, at some point going to be another patio and garden, um, and the other thing we're thinking the trees three four and five. Um, the other set are at least halfway through their lifespan, and we expect this new structure uh, to be here for, it, it could be here for the next 150 years. So if the trees are going to be here for 50, um, we, we want to make, we're, we're trying to plan this so uh, that it outlives the, the two trees. But we do want to replace them. Uh, we're not, we're, we do want to make sure that we're putting stuff back into the, the inventory for Northampton. The, the location of the, the location of the, on the plan that we have now is different from location that shows up on the site plan that we see on the server? Where they're going um, to push I don't, I don't believe so. The, a note on the, Arbor, on the Arborist report, 
he, uh, he said that trees one and two may be adversely impacted if the trenching, if the utility lines were run through their root systems. And when we initially spoke with him, uh, the, the utilities were gonna go between the house and the property line, which would have put them directly at the base of trees one, two, and three. Um, in response to him saying that, uh, we, we pushed them as close to the deck as we can get them, uh, which gets them outside of the, um, that critical zone. No, I guess what I'm saying is the site plan that at least I had seen on the planning system shows like all the trees are in a row here, like one through eight are all like in a line. But the site plan that I saw previously has two of the trees. It looks like they would be trees, maybe six and seven. I don't know. The layout just looks different. Is this oh, the correct I, layout? This is I, what's actually I, I see. I see what you're saying. So when um, Carolyn uh, in, asked me to provide uh, per the zoning, um, for the, the zoning ordinance, uh, the description and key for the Arbor's report, okay. I originally didn't have the trees properly put in here. And didn't so this is the correct layout. This is the correct that you're looking at. Yeah. This is and existing. Just, okay. Yeah, and there should be a copy of this that was sent out. This went to Carol. Yeah, no, there's another one. I mean, yeah, but it's unclear which is the. You know, it's just two yeah. versions. And stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I did. We didn't realize that uh, several of the trees were going to be considered significant until the arborists came out. Um, and when they were, we we revised them and made sure that it was accurately depicted on here per his guidance. So the only trees at this point um, identified to be removed are numbers four and five? Yeah, those are the ones that are said to be, uh, will be impacted severely by the placement of uh, the structure in its location as you see it. And I know in the application you mentioned that uh, you or the homeowners, the applicants had discussed this plan with the abutters on either side. Did either of the abutters have any requests or concerns about kind of buffering between their homes, their yards, and the new, um, the new home? Um, so Val, you can Val, you guys can jump in here. I know yeah. there was conversation about the trees removed on the southern property line because uh, that does create more of a um, uh, the the non significant trees, and I think they were fine with it. And interestingly, the the arborist who is on the property has done tree work on behalf of the Northern property owners for significant tree one and two over the last, I think he said five or 10 years. And he uh -huh. informed me that they absolutely would not let them die. <laughs> so um, so we, yeah. they, they have been involved. Yeah, the neighbors are totally supportive of the plan and have no, no concerns. And I emailed them about this meeting and, and Give your email address and say please email the concerns and they both weighed in that they were totally fine with it so did you all look at a i mean you're doing an l-shaped building and you're going over the setback and you're dealing with did you look at just doing a linear blend i understand you want to stay away from the barn but i mean it looks like a bedroom that's to the south there or something i assume that's a bedroom Yep. Or, or the living room, I guess it's a living, I don't know what it is. Whatever that room is that's 15 foot six wide, I mean, couldn't you just put that in, towards the back of the property? Um, if, if we made it linear at the same setback, we'd be putting more significant trees at risk. Um, no, yeah, but I, I wouldn't say do it at the same setback. I mean, I'm just asking if you looked at that, doing it within your setbacks and, you know, yeah, doing the legal looked, version first. Well, uh, what we was looked at that? a few. Um, uh, again, the a long linear building like that, if we were to do, I think it ended up being 45, 50 feet long, not quite 50, but um, again, the aesthetics is, is not quite as nice when you, with this L shape, what it does from their deck is it's going to create a nice framed in view of the patio on the outside. Um, the other reason that we, we stuck with an L shape is uh, it optimizes floor space in these small square feet buildings. Um, if you look at it, there's virtually no hallways in it. Uh, so you're, you're maximizing living space. And it also integrates nicely the, uh, the outdoor patio with, with the bedroom and the interior space. 
So we, we did look at a few different floor plans, including one that was a little bit wider than this. We had started, uh, when we had started the process, I think back in February, uh, we were going to be removing the barn um, and putting this at the, the back of the lot, which would have allowed us to pull this closer to the middle, um, completely out of the realm of the trees. But um, we, we decided that it was best to keep that barn as it was in good shape and it would be a good meeting space for uh, Aiden and his friends. So it's aesthetic. That's that's the that's the reason the bar was not okay. Yeah. So, David, just to make sure I understand your question, the intent of your question is that it became a uh, a linear building. Then they would be able to move it in more into the interior of the lot. Yeah, I mean, I'm just asking, I mean, it seems like there's plenty of space on the lot to do, a, you know, a two, you know, a by the book version. I'm just asking what the issues were with that that caused them to ask for, you know, for us to look at this. That's all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really just uh, really considering how this is going to impact the value and, and what it does to the ambience of their, of their rear yard. Um, if we bring this further into the center, um, from their existing deck, they're going to be looking square at the roof of a long skinny building. Um, and that's going to have, that, that's not going to bode as well as something that really fits to the existing backyard. Um, and again, putting it here, we're willing to replace the trees um, to accommodate well, something that we think is going to age. age I would better. say usually building a house in your backyard will usually change the aesthetic of your existing backyard, no matter what shape it is. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> We yes, really yes. like we really like this. Um, we worked a lot on the um, aesthetics of it and the uh, and the blueprint to make it work for. Um, did you give site. us a, uh, any pictures of that or why? Like any? Drawings? Yeah. So at the end of the app, there is some uh, 3D rendering which I'll show of how it kind of fits into the the backyard like this. Okay. So on my, on my screen, this is this is the view from the deck uh, with. Um, with this patio. So this is all gonna be Goshen stone. We're gonna have a raised Goshen stone patio. But as you can see, they kind of play off each other. We just had a long skinny building. Um, it, it's it's gonna look like a mobile home sitting in their backyard. And that, that wasn't what we wanted to do. Um, and it's also as well, one of the things that Aiden brought up in the plan <coughs> is his bedroom is going to be in this wing. And with that window, he has a direct view of his parents' house, uh, which was which is a valuable piece of the design, as well as putting that patio there to kind of marry the the two living spaces. Can can I add that um, our son? I'm not sure it's been mentioned, but he's an adult with uh, disabilities with Down syndrome. So that's that's why you know we're building a home for a 24 year old son. Yeah, that was in the application. Okay, I um, didn't know you that. Are you gonna? Uh, and I don't know if this would affect the neighbors, and I'm not sure it's even our purview. But is the is this path is this path going to be lit? I mean, given that it's a I don't know what 50 feet walk or something like that from the main house. Um, right now, we we haven't specced in lighting, but if that but any lighting would would be downlit and to the ground. Right now, the lighting that's included is at the doorway and at the rear egress. Okay. Is that is that a is that something that we should talk about at all, George, for the future? I mean, I, I just don't know. And I don't even know if we if it's our if it's not what we should be talking about, then we don't need to talk about it. Yeah, to be honest, I I think our understanding is if they don't have anything on the final plan that they present to us, that is any kind of concern down the road, they won't be able to put it in, um, okay. you know, so as long as they don't present anything mm -hmm. tall bollards or any kind of spotlight that leaves the, mm -hmm. <coughs> the perimeters of the yard, then they'll be okay <coughs> adding some small kind of mushroom things along. Okay, that. I think that's okay, as, lo as long as it's not, it's not good, good question. I'm gonna mute now. Yeah, any 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 differences in lighting and things that are specifically mentioned in the zoning ordinance for how we need to uh, how do we need to do this? Um, we'll I mean we're, we're, we'll be doing exactly what we say. 
uh, any changes like lighting after the fact, we'd be coming back and asking for permission. Good. Um, if I, another question, you mentioned the, uh, the change in grade as we move to the back of the slope. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there is any stormwater considerations of during a heavy rain, if in fact rain will kind of sheet flow into the, the property where the factories are. I don't know what to call that. Uh, so that, we're not, what is that? Um, we're not doing any, we're not, we're not changing anything with the grade. Um, and I, so we're, we're not changing the slope. So it'll continue as is. Uh, we have been back there in, in the spring working on this with the wet spring we've had. I haven't noticed any, any drainage issues. And I, uh, I don't know, Valley and Phil, do you ever have drainage issues back there where you're hitting puddles or ponds? Okay. I think they're, Singly, no. So I, we have not had an engineer look at um, issues of the existing grade um, or whether or not this would impact or change that. Um, but we're not building in the grade, we're building below it. Okay. Um, and I understand all of the utilities are separate from the main house. They're all coming off the street, the electric, the sewer, the water. Um, so water is is metered behind the existing meter, so we'll be connecting into the existing water line, um, and they have a, they have a, a newer pipe and ample flow to support it. Uh, the electric service will be submetered to the house, and the sewer line is going to connect into the existing uh, sewer in the basement and go out to the street. And Carolyn, you can probably help me here. Is that one of the uh, the criteria for having this termed a, uh, a multi-unit house, is that um, the uh, utilities are, sub are uh, siblings of the parent house, so to speak? <laughs> well, you know, that's a good question. Typically, um, that doesn't really relate. I mean, different departments may view these and define sort of multifamily versus single family differently. And I know Department of Public Works has had um, various responses to the way they would like to see connections made based on ownership or I guess tenancy and, and whether it's um, owner occupied or uh, rent, renter occupied, but it really doesn't relate to land use. Um, um in a broader sense so we look at this as a um an application for a second principal structure on the parcel and um it can be um this could be uh, this could change in the future it doesn't have to be a family member that lives in the structure it could also be um so it could be rented to someone else that you could create a condominium and create and have both units as owner occupied units on a shared parcel. I don't know if that's um, what your question was, but certainly Department of Public Works has to prove the connectivity. And if there are, I think their biggest concern is to make sure that there's separate metering for each of the units and um, that um, they will have to follow the DPW standard for those for that um, connection. Thank you. Any other questions from the board members before we open it up for public comment? All right, well, at this point, is there anybody in the uh, room, the Zoom room, who would like to comment on the application? All right, well then. Um, any other questions from the board members for the applicant before we consider a motion to close the public hearing? I'm going to close the public hearing. Second. So, <laughs> so um, there's been a motion to close the public hearing and a second um, discussion. So, I think we might want to walk through the conditions first while we have the the applicant and the, the designer here to make sure that we're all on the same page about 
what else we're asking of him, of them, before we close the public hearing, because then we won't be able to talk to them. So, um, in the, in the staff report, Carolyn mentioned a few things. I and I. <clears throat> And I will just say, just so you know, that the DPW comments were really just related to the um, utility connect uh, utility connections and the relationship to the trees. Um, so uh, that was um, they didn't have any other issues that they raised from a DPW so, standpoint. So we'll roll that into the conditions that um, the uh, recommendations of the plan of the. CPW around the utilities? Um, well, I think that um, they've probably addressed that since that was the, they saw the original plans without before the utilities were changed, were adjusted. I think with, if you wanted to address that in a condition, you would, um, the arborist recommendation about the utility as the lines change um, have been shown in these revised plans. So I think that addresses that. Um, there are other recommendations in the Arborist report about prepping the site um, for the construction that may, um, that I would recommend makes sense to be incorporated as a condition that they have an Arborist on site to um, um, both um, oversee the tree protection for those trees and also um, oversee during construction um, the careful, you know, root pruning, uh, pruning within the critical root zone, and that would address that. Okay. Uh, can, 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 may I ask a question? It says here the the condition four, the trees one, two, four, five. Uh, All escaping tree replacements in accordance, etc. This is applicable for one, two, four, and five. This is this that means what does that mean here? Because the, the replacement would be only the four and five, right? The trees. Um so that was before they adjusted the utility line location. Oh, oh okay. So I think the ones that would um the now with that adjustment, um I think it would really be applicable to those trees four and five. All right. Yes. Yeah. The, um, the applicant also suggested they might do some plantings on the, oh boy, is that the, on the east side or the southerly side towards the, uh, the older factories? Do those need to be specified in a planting plan? We were, can I, can I comment on that? Sure. Um, so what, what we'd like to do is uh, put a contingency on the occupancy permit and just have it reviewed on how many trees have been planted prior to Aiden moving in and the building inspector uh, allowing occupancy. And what we can plant, we will plant, and what we can't, we'll make up the difference in a, in a payment to the tree fund. Carolyn, does that sound workable for you? Um, typically, um, yes. I mean, I think that um, what you've done in the past is to, um, I'm sorry, uh, what you've done in the past is to have a condition that um, would be that they just need to show that they've met the tree replacement requirements before they get a final certificate of occupancy. And um, a, particularly when it's not clear how many trees can be planted on the property, Sometimes it's just not known until you know the, all the site work is done. So I don't think that's an issue at all. Um, and then for whatever gap there is, then they could make a payment in compliance with the zoning ordinance um, because that's all spelled out. It's very clear. It's not a um, a subjective decision. You know, it's either you're showing that you're meeting the standard or you haven't. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I, I think our conditions are pretty clear then. Um, um, so we'll take up that motion to close the public hearing. Um, any other discussion? 
All those in favor of closing the public hearing and we need to do this as we learned by roll call. So I'll call off your names as I see them on the screen, which would be um, all those in favor or let me no, let me just record your vote. Um, Alan Verson. And, uh, yes. All right, Sam Taylor. Yes. Yuri. Yes. Closing the public hearing. Um, David. Yes. Yes. And Marissa Elkins. Yes. Uh, Melissa Fowler. Yes. And Jana. Yes. Thank you. All right. If there are no other questions for the applicant or about the conditions. Perhaps someone who has the agenda in front of them might make a motion. Where is the agenda here? Okay, motion to approve the proposal of site plan. No, site plan review by Beck, uh, Backyard ADU as for detached residential unit in the rear of 73 North Main Street, Florence, map ID 17C 247. Thank you, Yuri. Is there a second? Second. Second by Jana. Thanks, Jana. Um, so we need to just to add with the conditions as discussed, at least these four conditions as laid out. Any discussion before we vote on this motion? All right, then we'll do it by roll call again. The motion has been made to accept the uh, application for the site plan. Um, Alan Verston. Approved. Sam. All right, Yuri. Opposed. Opposed. Yeah. Um, David Whitehall. Approved. Marissa Elkins. Approved. Melissa Fowler. Approve. All right, and Jana? Approve. Very good, and the chair will vote to approve also. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in favor, eight in favor, one no. I've got to find my court. Okay, um, oh, Carolyn, George? did you? Yeah, yep. just to be clear, so um, seven voting members, um, so it would be six to one. Um, so, and I didn't count, so um, uh, the one, um, since we have one associate member, okay, we wouldn't count that. Okay, oh. six to one then. Yep. Well, thank you very much then, folks, for coming to this Zoom planning board meeting. Um, good luck on your project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. I've got to go find my power cord. Excuse me for one minute. You have three minutes. Tick, 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 tick. I I think he means the power cord for his computer, not for him, but we'll let him put it on. <laughs> I have a weird question. My, my son, who you've now all sort of met, is obsessed with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and specifically them living in sewers. How does one get, and maybe not now, I get with, with what's going on right here, but how does one get a tour of the Northampton sewers? Or sewer, or sewer system. <laughs> Interesting question. Please make sure I this think, makes the minutes. <laughs> you know, this is all being recorded. So. <laughs> Oba. <laughs> Are you denying the existence of mutant turtles in our sewers? <laughs> I think they do give tours of the sewage treatment plant. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not no, sure. I think, sure yeah, I think that, that's that's what I'm that's what I'm aiming, you know. So, 
Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, there are sometimes school groups that go there, but I may be talking way out of school on okay. that one. But Good Department right. of Public Works. <laughs> there is a video. Sam, I think. Oh, yeah. uh, Sam, I was going to say that down in uh, Hartford, there yeah. are. I don't. They're not really sewers, but but places where the river goes through. You know, various that that could have a, a sewer like vibe to it sure. for a, a little guy. I, I, um, I know if you go to Paris, you can tour the sewers in Paris. There is a uh, a video on YouTube of, on Northampton Public Television uh, of like a video tour of the flood control systems around town. Uh, I, I guarantee you, he will not find it as interesting as I found it, but uh, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> Other TV well, is Michelangelo at least there, or Donatello, Raphael? No. Uh, All right, I think we should move into our second hearing. I think the uh, applicant is waiting for us. Um, and yes, just, just as a reminder, I was very surprised myself, but this Zoom meeting, all of our little squares and talking heads was on TV the other day. They captured it all the way. So again, if you are, have some time at home during this uh, pandemic and you want to do something, look up cable TV and see yourself on Zoom in the planning board. So it is now, is it 7.45? Yep, it is now 7.45. And we'd like to open up a site plan review by John Kowalski for the demolition of existing construction of a 4,800 plus or minus square foot two family and 30 foot wide curd cup at eight Kingsley Avenue, Northampton, 32C153. Um, Mr. Kowalski, do you have a presentation for us? And I think you're muted. Oh, there we go. Yeah, can, uh, can you see me? Can you hear me? Looks good. Okay. Uh, good evening. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I got a couple, you know, I'll kind of walk you through the, uh, the, the narrative that was in the, uh, you know, in, in the package there. Um, Carolyn, is there a way I share or how do I, how do, I do that? Yep, um, I will make you a co-host so you can share. Um, just a minute here. And then, do you know how to use the share screen button? Is that the one at the bottom here? Yeah. Okay, can everyone see that? Yep. Okay. Okay, so uh, you know, I'll, I'll walk you through this. Obviously, stop me if, uh, if any questions come up. Um, move that off. So, you know, the, the existing structure, it's a, you know, single family home, cinder block walls on a slab um, built back in like 1960, I want to say, um, within the residential C zone. Um, Kingsley Ave is, is the little side street right on the side of uh, Roberto's restaurant, right, uh, right, kind of in downtown. Uh, I'll get some more on the existing lot um, and what it looks like there. Uh, just quick overview of the of the street. You know, number of of houses, kind of a, uh, you know, kind of a bunch of them, kind of hugging the lot lines around. Um, you know, I'll give you some quick pictures of what the what the street looks like there too. Um, quick snapshot of, of what the house looks like now. Um, you know, again, built back in uh, 1960 or so. Um, gives you a quick overview of what it is. And I think most of you have seen this in the, in the package. So. Um, again, what the house looks like now. Um, kind of a view uh, up the street looking towards Roberto. That's, that's Roberto's here on the left. Um, the neighbor directly to the left of the house um, across the street. Again, this is kind of uh, uh, in the yard, looking across the street. Um, looking down the street the other way, the house is over here on the left. Um, so you can't really see it here with the house here and then a pretty pretty good sized yard on this end there. Um, and then this could be part of the, the discussion, I'm sure. Uh, there's a, kind of an old cherry tree here 
that, uh, you know, it's getting really close to where the proposed house is coming. And then uh, a maple uh, kind of down here as well that, uh, that I'm sure we'll have some discussions about. Um, I'll get to a better view of the, you know, proposed and existing in, in a second here. Um, yeah, I'll get some, some better views of that. Um, you know, general view of the house, you know, um, you know, basically kind of a duplex uh, driveway situated uh, in the middle of the house, kind of in between the two units, you know, one for kind of privacy for each of them, uh, along with uh, privacy for the neighbors, right? So not kind of driving in along the sides right next to the neighbor's yards. Uh, this kind of keeps things right in the, in the middle of the, you know, the yard and kind of away from everyone isolated to, to this property. I'll go quickly through these plans uh, or skip past them unless there are any, any questions. Uh, the finding variants are not applicable for this one. Um, so about a la, you know, let me, would you prefer that I go through the plans next, uh, kind of the plot plans or kind of answer the, the questions on the narrative here for the requirements and other items? Yeah, I, I don't think, Mr. Kowalski, you need to go through all of the, the text there. Um, okay. I think most of the members were able to review that in the application or the notes from the staff. So yep. um, you might tell us a little bit more about the, uh, the trees on the property um, and your plans there. Okay, so this is kind of a, a zoom in of the, you know, the, the current yard. Um, you know, a couple of, uh, you know, a um, bunch of, you know, kind of old pine trees along the side here. Um, spoke with, uh, spoke with my neighbor on the, the left-hand side here, Charlene, and her preference is to, to keep all these trees at this time. So um, planning to keep all these now. Um, you know, she, she's actually out in Arizona. Um, but, you know, again, discussions with her, she, she's fine with it, would uh, prefer to keep these trees. Um, there is a, a maple in the back here that uh, is, you know, really going to basically going to be kind of right on top of the, uh, the new house. Um, um, and so, you know, this would be proposed to come down. And then there are a couple little, little small trees along this area here. Um, so I, I guess just to, to speak about this maple back here, um, I've spoken with uh, my neighbor, Sean, in the back here. Um, he's fine with this coming down, actually, that this whole tree, everything that's, all the limbs that are kind of going over his yard have already been uh, taken down. So there's really only kind of a couple little branches that are, that are sticking over the yard this way, kind of over where the house would be. Um, on the right-hand side, again, some small trees here. Um, the neighbor, Joyce, uh, on this side here, actually is, uh, uh, spoken with her, and, and she'd actually be happy to see all of these come down. You know, some small little azaleas on the front here where, you know, I would, uh, you know, propose to, for those to come out it is, you know, they're, they're kind of small little things. I think they'll just get um, damaged during construction. Um, there is a, I think it's a cherry tree kind of right, uh, right where the driveway is proposed to go. Um, so, this, so this one would need to come down. Uh, and then there is a maple kind of in the, in the tree belt here that uh, is, you know, starting to get close to the, the proposed house as well. And so that's kind of the question there. So this is kind of the as is. Um, I'll get over to the uh, proposed now. And again, so it kind of shows the you know, again, the trees kind of staying along here, um, you know, the maple in the back coming out, um, the little ones on the sides coming out and the, the cherry coming out. And then, uh, you know, proposing that these other trees kind of within the, within the tree belt come out as well. Um, again, driveway, um, you know, proposed to be in the center here, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, kind of not necessarily the 15 feet, but sticking within the 30 foot requirement. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's suitable for, um, you know, for this location, for the neighborhood, there's no, uh, 
no parking on this side of the street, so you know, not taking away from any parking. Um, sidewalks on the opposite side of the street, so really not a, a long driveway for someone to, to walk in front of. Um, and that's, that's the gist of it. I guess I'll, I'll, I'll open it up to questions. <clears throat> so do I understand you're proposing to remove both substantial trees that are off your property? That, that's what I'm requesting. Yeah, so, you know, the big ones, particularly this maple, you know, these, you know, these azaleas, I'd say are, you know, near the end of their lives. The, so, the uh, twin 20 inch um, maples look very healthy to me. Uh, understood. Yeah, I think it's, you know, more of a, you know, initially this, this was a little further and the, the concern is that, hey, is it close to the house, the foundation? Um, and then, you know, you know, kind of just, uh, just blocking up everything in the front here. So that was kind of the, the request for it there. Carolyn, a question. Um, can we, I mean, can we authorize that? Uh, no. So any of the trees that are outside of the property, they're in the, they're in the public way. So those are considered public shade trees and that is a separate jurisdiction. So the um, Public Shade Tree Commission will have to hold a hearing. So an application would have to be made by the applicant um, to the Department of Public Works because they're the ones that um, stat or essentially provide um, and oversee the Public Shade Tree Commission and their work. So uh, that is not part of the Planning Board jurisdiction. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. And that's a, you know, that's a separate approval process that Mr. Kowalski would have to um, um, follow. Okay, understood. But I, I will say, I'm sorry, so in my recommendation, my staff report is that, that, they, that those trees would be protected, that, that in particular the maple there would be protected. Um, Obviously, if the intention is for the applicant to seek approval to remove those, you probably would want to pull that out of any condition that tree protection be in place. Again, that's going to be up to the, um, the Public Shade Tree Commission to determine anyway. So um, I guess I would pull back that one condition that I'd rep recommended originally about protecting that tree given the intention of the applicant to seek approval through the Department of Public Works. I, I guess I'm, I, I mean, I want to push back and say that I, I feel like it, this project needs to have this shade commission tell them, tell us if it's, if it's okay, because I, I guess I can't, I couldn't, if, if, it, if it's not okay to move the cherry tree, then this project is not going forward. Well, um, yeah, I guess the, the sorry, go ahead. Well, I, I think if it's not up to us to decide about the, the maple tree, you approve or you can approve. And, uh, you know, if you well, didn't. No, I mean, I guess I, I, I mean, I guess I would just say, how could I approve something where there's a, tree in the middle of the driveway well then it's up to them if there is a garage there that is up to them if it is not approved they build but under that condition right with the tree blocking that side of the, the construction i don't see well it's also going to be potentially <laughs> damaged by the construction too so I, it looks it appears a cherry may um be on private property in which case it's not a public shade tree okay. um so this uh, just confirm i think you had a surveyor draw the boundaries is that correct mr kowalski yeah correct Her harold eaton uh, associates went out there to uh right. to survey and mark all of these trees out there okay yeah so that's the cherry in particular is on private property so okay. um the maple tree um, is can't be touched unless Department of Public or, or I'm sorry, Public Shade Tree Commission approves the change. 
Um, so you could certainly approve a plan. Um, and then the Public Shade Tree Commission could say, no, you can't take this tree down. And the applicant's just going to have to figure out how to construct yeah. around okay. the tree. Okay. I, I'm sorry. I thought the cherry, I thought the cherry tree was, which would be in the middle of his driveway. Yeah. Oh, no. <clears throat> I mean, by, by right, though, I mean, all of, you know, probably 30% or 40% of those maple branches are going over the property line and those he could go and cut without any questions, right? Um, the maple in the right of way. Um, I mean, yeah. Any, any branches that are going on to the property. Right, so long as he doesn't damage the tree itself. Okay. Sure, and, and that, that, that's, that's certainly maybe an option, right? Just to kind of kind of trim it to keep it away from the, from I mean, the proposed home. This is, a, this is a 20, I mean, a pretty big maple. I mean, everywhere you look, they're taking down old sugar maples um, in town. And this one's right on top of a, of a pole it seems like a nice one to take down, to be honest. Um, in a part of the, the I mean, power lines go go right through it. Trees, to be honest. So. Yeah, but regardless, it's not in our jurisdiction. It's not our purview. Yeah. Yeah. We can skip it. Yeah, but you just hate trees. I know it. I hate them. <laughs> um, while we're still on the tree topic, though, the pine trees towards the uh, um, the Pleasant Street side of the lot need to be protected during construction that's noted as one of the um Condition. we need to have a plan to show that tell me yes. um oh sorry alan well I was just, it's 15 feet away from the building regardless if they're if they're driving heavy machinery in there to take down that cinder block building and they're right. digging a foundation, the heavy equipment, there's a really good chance that they would, you know, really mangle mm -hmm. the, the drip line, the roots and the trees. So that's just why we asked to have protection around those. Okay. Um, Carolyn, maybe you could tell us the, uh, of the upshot of the, the zoning board meeting today. And does that at all impact <clears throat> it was on this um, sure. parcel also. Does that at all impact about what we're uh, discussing? So the zoning board did approve the extension of or expansion of the existing non-conforming rear setback. So that was the very that's the that was the narrow issue that the zoning board had to review was just as it relates to that rear setback, and that was approved. That was uh, approved earlier today. Currently, the existing building sits right on the property line, I believe. Uh, Mr. Kowalski, do you have any plans for any kind of fence or buffer between the new building and the abutter to the rear? Yeah, I've spoken with, uh, with the neighbor in the back, Sean. There's, there's an existing fence there now. Um, and the thought is that, you know, at the end of, uh, end of construction, you know, uh, some kind of new fence would, uh, would end up going up there. Can we get that kind of laid out on your final plans? Not exactly the, the, uh, all the materials of the fence, but just new fence to be constructed by applicant? Um, sure, yeah, I guess, you know, if there's some kind of stipulation or however you guys want to word it, you know, it's, it's basically gonna run, you know, along the, along the lot line. Are we saying he has to have a fence? I mean, what if he doesn't want a fence? Well, I think what we just heard is that the abutter thought that the abutter wanted to have a fence. Who said yeah, that? Yeah, I guess I, I proposed it to him. You know, he didn't, uh, you know, he was, he was open to it, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, you know, it wasn't, uh, hey, you need to put it, I guess, was, was the conversation. Um, I guess, you know, we talked a little bit about a fence or, uh, you know, a row of arbs or something like that. Um, the neighbor on the other side as well, um, Charlene talked about wanting to do a fence here. So when she's, she's supposed to be back in town in August, um, you know, Frank and I was going to get together with, with them and, and, and kind of see what, what their preference would be. 
So David, you want to talk about that more? Do you think we're it's going above and beyond to ask them to stipulate? I mean, I don't know why does the city need to make them have a fence? So I mean, it's fine if they build a fence. I don't care, but I don't see why we should tell them they have to. Have Which way are the houses in back oriented? So repeat that, please. What what? My question was whether the houses in back. Are, is the backyard of those houses, or how are they oriented? With respect um, to this? Yeah, let me see if I can, uh, it's the best way to show you. Um, yeah, there's kind of a, a road that comes, or a driveway that comes in through here, and then, uh, you know, it's along this area. And then I guess this is kind of yard back here. That's actually, that's actually a mapped street, Florida Avenue. That's oh, not look at that street. tree. Ooh. Um, and it seems like the neighbor is, is right up to the property line, more, even closer than the existing building. Yeah, they're pretty close. Yes, I guess that, that kind of gives you an idea of it, too. Yeah. I mean, it seems like squeezing a, a fence through the eye of a needle is a silly exercise, but if they want to, they could. But I, I just don't understand why we care. Um, there certainly isn't a requirement in the zoning that that be done. And typically, you um, might not see it in, or might not propose it as a condition unless there were some um, issue uh, of mitigation that you were attempting to address between um, property owners. I don't <clears throat> see anybody in the um, who's joined the meeting who might make public comment. We certainly we haven't gotten any public comments written um, to the office uh, or to me in particular about about um, from any of the abutters actually about this project for either permit. Well, I, my, my personal opinion is that if there were a neighbor there with some objection and asking for a fence, I would say we should impose that requirement. But lacking any input from the neighbor, maybe it doesn't matter. But isn't that a way of fencing there? Is, isn't that a fence you're waiting there? there? There is an old old fence there now. So, so the fence is there. So they decide what to do. If they replace. Turn down. That's. I don't think you you should come up with require it. Okay. I, I mean, a six, a, a six foot fence, you know, ten feet from a twenty four foot building seems kind of, you know, like a silly exercise. But whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm I'm certainly willing to withdraw that that uh, stipulation. Um, I just heard that the abutters talked about it. So if they talked about it, we often try to protect the abutters in some way. Um, but if they're on good terms and they decide a year from now or two years from now that they'd like to have a fence and we feel Mr. Kowalski will do that, then, then they can move on um, outside of this condition for sure. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll certainly work with, you know, work with my neighbors, keep, uh, keep everyone happy. Yep. All right, other questions by planning board members? I would like to hear more from the applicant and from Carolyn about the issue of the driveway. Um, I guess from the applicant's perspective, if, if you could say a little bit more about why you chose this configuration that would require the, uh, the, the waiver for the size of the driveway versus other configurations. You said a little bit about privacy, but I'm not totally sure I, I follow that argument. Um, and then Carolyn, if you can talk a little bit more about sort of the, the city's goals with that and how and, and kind of elaborate on your comments from the staff memo. Mm -hmm. Sure, you know, so I kind of, uh, you know, mentioned, hey, you know, trying to keep it in the middle here, right, just so, uh, you know, if you're turning into the side, you're not getting a car headlights and everything else into the, the neighbor's driveway. So that was part of the, the thought there. Um, the other part of it is, is kind of the, the challenge in, in finding parking um, on such a such a narrow lot, so that's kind of um, 
really why um, really set the houses up with uh, two car garages each really to to help with the parking perspective it's kind of uh, we're wrangling in trying to get a driveway within here that that's long enough to to still count as parking spaces and then still um, so so that that was kind of part of it as well is really getting a garages in there as well um, to open things up there um, where's the garage is inside right under right in the middle yeah, yeah. there we go oh hmm. so without the 30 foot driveway you couldn't get access to two two car garages is that right correct it'd be very difficult especially with the you know with the short distance obviously yeah that's under that's what seven and a half feet per car so it, it is tolerable if you just had two garages there, one for each unit, and then there was parking somewhere else on the lot, if then the building itself was shrunk down by that amount, you could park a car on either side of the house or the applicant. What we hope for in these downtown locations is not everybody has a car, perhaps. Um, that's one of the expectations or maybe it's a little wistful but that that doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be two three four cars to this to these units because yeah are, yeah and, and i think the you know the downtown location i think will will encourage people right to you know to not have as many cars the the, the challenge is that the the parking requirement is still there um to have a certain number of spots per per house that that's kind of still the challenge yeah so just to answer your question jenna um the require the allowance for residential use is a 15 foot wide curb cut um per parcel in commercial districts um there's a, a allowance for 24 foot wide curb cuts because of needing to accommodate two-way traffic um, going in and out of commercial um, properties and then with approval from the planning board that could potentially go up to 30 feet for a commercial use um so you know this is 30 feet for a two-family in a in a residential district with a very <coughs> narrow street um i think the issue some of the issues that i raised in the staff um, report to you all relate to pedestrian safety um, the reason for having narrow curb cuts is to really um, provide um, a balance in the street network to um, allow safe passage for pedestrians so they're not walking across wide expanses of driveways where there could be conflict. Obviously, this is a dead end street, so there's not going to be the same amount of traffic that you would see on a pleasant street. Um, but at the same time, we've the city spent an enormous amount of money to go back and retrofit some of those inconsistent and conflicting um, access points um, in the network throughout the city. Um, so allowing a brand new wide curb cut um, that sort of is actually um, inconsistent with this goals and objectives of the city of trying to narrow those throughout the rest of the city. Um, I think the other piece is this for the most part um, in this older part of um, the city, there aren't a lot of um, attached four car garages. I mean, that's essentially what this is, is um, four car garage, which is what's dictating the size of the curb cut. And there are many other ways um, to accommodate parking on the parcel without requiring or resulting in a 30 foot curb cut. So. And historically, there weren't attached garages in these neighborhoods, and it's, that's the case across the street um, and in most of the neighborhoods downtown. So I think for those reasons, um, we would recommend that the applicant work on a different layout in order to 
accomplish and not need, you know, accomplish the parking and not need um, the um, approval for the wider curb cut. Uh, we, we do have a minimum parking requirement that's one, uh, one parking space per thousand square feet of living area. Although the planning board many times approves a reduction in that parking, particularly given a location of this sort where um, many of the trips um, for residents can be made on foot or by bicycle and not all trips have to be made by car. Um, so. Is this a, this is a question for the applicant is, if it weren't for the parking minimum, would you put a different number of spaces or a different number of um, attaches on this, in this project? Uh, I, I think my, my preference would be to still keep the, the two spaces per unit. But what I mean, would two, two, two car garages, or would you be open to doing some surface parking and some, or want to do for, for you have a desire to do the two two car garage irrespective of the minimums is that what we're hearing? I, I do yeah correct that that is that is my preference you know i think uh yeah obviously no 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 plan is 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 perfect right we, you know it could go around for forever i you know I, I think that this was kind of the the best balance of of you know of everything kind of uh in trying to get the the area to work, you know, or, you know, to work for this lot. I think I would be more bothered by having cars parked on the lawn, either the left side or the right side or in front, um, or looking for a parking place on the street than by a 30 foot driveway. I, I actually don't. I understand it would be a waiver from current requirements, but I don't really see a wide driveway as presenting a risk to the public. Is, is Kingless, that street is a Roberto's street, is the same on the other side of the street? Right. Yeah, the other side has a, has a... Um, but it's Roberto's, Roberto's is on the restaurant. Yeah, yeah, correct. So this is this is looking up the street. Yeah, right. Roberto's is this rep, is this this building right here, um, and you can kind of see the you know one the, the the sidewalk along here right along goes down the whole street. You know, and secondly, you, you know, kind of the, the neighbor already. next door. You know, this is you know certainly more than thirty feet to uh, to park within this area, and there are a number of cars that that are normally parked. Yeah, because that street. street uh, uh, it's pretty busy, right? Uh, the evening, I mean, it just people who go to Roberto's, I myself, I try and uh, that is no, it's very limited. Yeah, but aren't you time. walking on the, I mean, technically speaking, aren't you supposed to be walking on the side of the street with the sidewalk? But uh, that is only one side. Sidewalk. That's my point. That's my point. Like, it's not like, there shouldn't be cr cross traffic over his, over this driveway because people shouldn't be walking in the street. But people do walk in the street. Unless they walk in the, well. But. Yeah, there is no parking along this side of the street as, as you go further down the, uh, down the road. There's again, the view I, of the sidewalk across the street. And then as you look down here, yeah, there's no parking on yeah. this side. So I think if anyone did park here, they would kind of naturally be on this side of the street as well. I with the parking, the garage, the stuff, you know. Well, so, I have a little issue with the kind of the, 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 the size of the house and the look of the garages that mass considering the other houses on the street. Granted, um, I think four, there's like nine houses on the street. Five of them are two family. None of, maybe one has an attached garage. The others have paved driveways. Um, if, if planning board members remember some of the projects we looked up at South Street, uh, the neighbors came out in force to talk about how terrible the parking was along their streets and they couldn't accommodate any more development there because parking was so slim. But 
Yeah, we don't have any butters, any uh, butters here tonight saying that parking's an issue. Um, I think part of living downtown, and I live more or less downtown, is that people do find on-street parking. Um, and even on a dead-end street like this. Um, so I, I, I really think having four garages um, in this kind of house is really uh, um, just not in keeping with the character of the other homes here. So um, that's Carolyn, where I'm is, coming from. Is that a consideration that we can base a decision on? Um, well, uh, the request for the driveway curb cut really, I mean, the zoning is very clear that says, um, you know, the board can approve a wider curb cut um, if and only if it will promote safe and efficient traffic circulation. That's a specific standard about the driveway. Under site plan, there are other um, parameters that relate to um, looking at the context um, of um, the neighborhood. Um, and it, and they relate, well, first, before we get into the context, there is, um, you know, minimizing a site plan approval just generally, even without the special consideration of a wider curb cut is related to minimizing um, curb cut widths um, and improving pedestrian and vehicular safety. Um, but going, you know, sort of generally about the context of the neighborhood, um, this, um, you know, there is a requirement that the use promotes convenience and safety of vehicular and pedestrian movement and is um, protects um, adjoining premises um, uh, related to sight and sound. Um, it's, um, I think they're tied, I think the massing and the issue of the curb cut are tied together just because of the way of the design. Um, so the focus really is more about um, the safety on the network um, as it relates to the wider curb cut. Um, but it is tied to that massing, just the way the, the applicant has chosen to um, cite the building and the, and the scale and size of the building. I think there's like a de facto, the, the fact is that the property line, you, like the, the is, looks like it's a few feet off of the property line and then the pole is still another five or eight feet from where the, the paving of the street starts. Mm -hmm. So there's sort of a de facto zone of, of whether it's parking or not. I mean, there's basically going to be four interior garage and then four spots in the garage, even if it's not by the letter of the law counted in the parking for the parking requirements. So there is basically eight spots here. I, I don't think we have the purview to, to say you can't build four garages, but I do think because of the weird nature of this lot, I think this is kind of what Carolyn was saying is like, if we don't approve the 30 foot curb cut, there's probably no way to get four garages on this shallow site without, um, well, you'd end up maybe with two curb cuts, one on either end. I don't know. There's some other design. Yeah. I mean, you don't, you certainly, there's no requirement that you have to, I mean, garages aren't required. Um, right. Parking is required. There is also a provision in the site plan approval that says, you know, the site will function harmoniously in relation to other structures in open space, existing buildings, um, and existing buildings and assets in the area. So, and that relates to building orientation, massing, and egress. So it sort of looking at the context of that and whether or not four garages and the massing of four garage spaces makes sense in this context is certainly within the planning board um, review and analysis, I think. Um, you know, I think um, you cert, you know, so long as the minimum parking requirement can be met in some way, then um, 
you know, you certainly, the way that's done is certainly under the jurisdiction. Of I guess I'd just like to add a couple, couple of items. Um, you know, so I guess, you know, one as far as, you know, kind of, you know, fitting the, the character of the neighborhood, you know, I, I was trying to, to do that in, in some sense, you know, it's, you know, maybe it looks a bit bigger because it, you know, they're together. Um, but in general, trying to stick with, um, you know, kind of a same two story plan, similar to what's the, what's on the, the other units as well. Um, so, you know, that there were, were some considerations for that, I guess, kind of trying to keep with a, with a similar style um, as well. Um, and then, you know, I think you guys touched on, you know, the, the parking spaces in the garages are, are obviously great, you know, for, for when people are there. And then even if the other spaces don't quite meet the letter of the law for um, parking spaces, you know, any guests that do come for a short amount of time, um, you know, I'm sure the neighbors would appreciate those guests not taking up any other spots along the street. So, yep. you know, the other nice thing is that 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 proposed drive does actually open up some spots for guests as, as they do come to visit. Yeah, I actually think that this is almost the opposite of that. I mean, I, the, the South Street projects, because uh, it because it seems like there's you're creating parking. I mean, unless they're having a huge barbecue there, which is their right to do, then uh, and that would be a problem no matter what. Uh, it seems like this there's going to be there's an ample amount of parking. I, I could I can understand saying that you don't like it because the the curb cut is too big. Um, I mean to me it seems safer, but I also haven't studied it to understand why it's more dangerous. It, it seems like there's more room I'm gonna be able to see more better of this. If if this was this is basically a mirror image house, you know, zero lot line house with, a, with, so you share the driveway. If you had just done the same house, not mirrored it, just done two, you know, living room, front door, garage, and then living room, front door, garage with two curb cuts, you'd have two curb cuts that were 30 or 40 feet away from each other. I, don't know. Uh, I believe there's a requirement for only one curb cut per lot. Is, is that correct? Um, there is. Again, it relates to um, you can get a permit if you can show that it's uh, for safety and improves, improves safety on the network. Basically the same standard as the wider curb cut. Um, in that scenario where you've got two buildings, one after the other, and you've got smaller distances, but two, um, given the context of that street, um, you would, uh, you're potentially sort of matching that because there are driveways every, you know, the, the width, the parcel widths are pretty narrow. So it's sort of, as a pedestrian, you're sort of anticipating that pattern of, um, you know, narrow frontage lots and then drive followed by driveways. So, um, Yes, the, the you have to show that it's for improved safety if you have two curb cuts. Um, and at that point, sure, the planning board would have to sort of look at, you know, which scenario is, is optimal in terms of safety on the network. Well, what I was going to say was, it's not obvious to me that that's particularly any safer. I mean, to have two more, I mean, I mean, you could have two houses on two different lots that each built their that each happened to have a driveway on you know the adjoining up against the same lot line i mean you could almost do it without even changing your plan by putting a little island between and make this into two driveways and then you could ask for you know you'd be asking for what carolyn just described i suppose well so the difference um david is that um as a pedestrian when you're making when you're crossing an expanse if you've got 15 feet, it's a less pavement to cross before you get to a you know refuge <laughs> where you have an island where you have your own safe space as a pedestrian versus 30 feet, which is a long expanse. And also, frankly, the wider the curb cut, the less 
likely cars are to slow down because they can just swing right in. They don't have to worry about, you know, curbs or any of that kind of thing. Um, so they're less apt to enter um, at a slower rate. I mean, the street is different in the, in the sense that it's a short um, dead end street. Um, but having um, smaller crossings or narrower crossings as a pedestrian is safer than having to cross, yeah. even if you have to do two, is safer than crossing one long expanse. Right, that's why I was saying you could just put like an island in the middle of the 30 feet and end up with two driveways and not even change the massing. That's, that's yeah. That's yeah. What I'm yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, I, I, I see your point there, how, uh, you know, it, it could be done there. I think it's, I don't want to call it cheating the system exactly. I just, I don't, with the, really the limited amount of traffic on, on this side of the street, I don't think that it would be a, a big benefit, um, in, in my mind, at least. You know, and then I guess as far as uh, snow removal and everything else, that this would be easier if they were connected. I guess it to me, it like feels like, the, just, go ahead, Marissa. I was going to say, it does seem like that the concern about people, you know, flying into a, a driveway where there's a wider crab, uh, uh, curb cut is also mitigated here by how shallow the driveway is, you know, relative to the, uh, you know, because people are either, you know, pulling in and stopping in front of their garage or they're pulling into the garage and either way you don't, this does not look to me like a driveway that you could fly into or out of. It's either not way exactly way. a speedway. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and I, I guess, you know, with the other, you know, the other property that's, that's similar, um, at least, you know, any time that I've spent there, I haven't uh, seen anyone doing anything like that on, on this, this driveway here for, for this yeah. property. I'm just looking at this and listening to, you know, Carolyn's standards and the fact that we would need to give a waiver for a commercial property to have a 30 foot driveway and we're about to give it to this tiny parcel on a one way residential street in the heart of downtown when we're trying to uh, promote the use of public transportation and alternate uses of transportation and ultimately kind of fewer cars. Um, this and it doesn't promote safety on the site or on the street and it doesn't really match the 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 massing and the character of the neighborhood. I'm just not um, I mean, yes, the one-way street, yes, there's no sidewalks and so forth, but I'm just not seeing a compelling reason why such a huge variance should be allowed that's actually in kind of direct contradiction to a bunch of the city's goals. And, and as Carolyn said, a lot of efforts and work and financing that have been put in place to try to do the opposite of this in other places in the city. I just think that um, I'd rather have cars in a garage than on the lawn um, on either side of the building or taking parking places away from someone else. I think I'd just rather have fewer parking spots and fewer cars. I mean, I would much rather give a well, parking waiver to this site. You know, well, but that's not what it is. Fewer cars and I don't think. But but, but it could be, we could give the applicant a waiver as Jenna was saying, so that he only had to have one parking spot per unit uh, versus I, the two. Or I as I, I think David mentioned earlier that in front of the garage, there'd be another, a space for another car also. As we look not, at the plot plan, so not, the garage door is closed. It's not to be counted as, as a spot, but it's de facto would be big enough for, for there would, be enough space for four more cars in front of the garage doors. I think we heard pretty clearly that even if we changed, if we gave him a waiver from the parking minimum, he would still want to build these. So the parking minimum is not what's driving this. And by the way, we don't know whether tenants are going to rent these places because they can walk to downtown or because they can get in their car and hop right on I-91. But I think the to be pushing for development that has less help people push people to make the decisions to park it to, to get you don't have parking and and so that they don't choose to um 
have more cars or if they live if they're trying to get on 91 to go somewhere they could go live over where we're going you know <clears throat> right i mean the, the easier we make it for the park the more cars people are going to have i mean that's on the yeah i think it's still you know kind of striking a balance of, of trying to encourage the development downtown and then and still give people the flexibility you know i think once they once they come in and park then uh then that's when when most of the walking and everything else takes place right that that's when uh, people are near all the other stuff uh, i just want to clarify my recommendation isn't that um the number of parking spaces provided is necessarily reduced it's just the or it's just about the orientation so i think there are many ways to accommodate four parking spaces on the site that are not this configuration. So I just wanted to make sure everyone understood that. But, and that's not, you know, the ordinance allows flexibility to have people opt to have fewer parking spaces uh, without, um, you know, trying to help maintain that balance and provide that option. I guess just the, the one the one other item to know, I guess, um, you know, you, you mentioned kind of, uh, you know, mirroring the the house and kind of having the garages on the outside rather than the inside. Um, you know, the nice part, I'll say also of having the garages on the, the inside is then that does give some side yard um, to the folks as well here, right? So this ends up kind of actually a nice little side yard for for a downtown area um, as opposed to if the garages were on the side you know you're not really going to walk from you know call it from your uh you know from your living room dining room you know around to get there so that that's kind of the other reason of of having the garages in the middle is to to make better use of, of the side yards mm. I mean, given that you're going over the setback lines, and I understand this is a very strange plot, uh, it's sort of a sideways lot and not built to the street, all these things. But I mean, the parking, the, if you had surface parking, it could be out, do I have the, the zoning right? Like you, the, by right, the, the driveways could be within the setbacks, no? Yes, yeah, there's no um, restriction for a driveway. Right, so it doesn't seem to be making best use. I mean, you have a very tight site here. It seems like there's efficiencies to be had uh, that you're not taking advantage of, even taking away this issue of <laughs> the four parking, four garages. Um, yeah. George, is it time to move forward and take some sort of vote? Well, let's make sure that I know we're, we're spending a lot of time on the, the driveways and the 15 versus 30 foot question. Are there any other items that have come up besides this? That There's that tree toward the back <clears throat> of the lot. Um, This one here? Right. And your question is, Alan, whether or not that should be um, saved? Well, right. I guess it's not really possible. And so he'll just pay him to the fund or plant hey. other trees. Yeah, I don't think that's a significant tree, so it's not, tr it oh, doesn't, it's, not? it's not triggered by, it's not 20 inches, I don't think. Uh, so it would not trigger the uh, oh, okay. tree calculation or tree replacement. It's kind of, kind of right on top of where this is and it, it's leaning kind of into, like I said earlier, you know, any branches that are left are all kind of leaning this way. Um, the neighbor cut all the ones that were leaning towards the back here towards his yard. So. Carolyn, I don't think any of the trees that will be removed fall within that category of Correct. having to need to be replaced, right? So there Correct. won't be any payment into, the only payment in lieu of is gonna be around traffic mitigation. 
or if there is a removal of a tree within the city right of way, that's a separate um, uh -huh. uh, calculation. Yep. Okay. Right. All right. Um, DPW had just a couple of um, comments about sewer cleanouts and um, uh, water shutoffs um, and having to create vertical separation between the uh, water and sewer lines. But those are all sort of technical details that, um, you know, will have to be um, addressed at the time that they apply, that the applicant applies for the water and sewer uh, permitting. Okay. And, and I didn't see anything, uh, you know, contentious in those. Those those seemed seemed fine. So then, the only other big condition is uh, that there needs to be an arborist report provided to the planning office before construction begins. That talks about the protection of the pine trees and. Because yeah, I, I would think that would be appropriate to make sure an arborist determines what the best protection methods would be for those pine mm -hmm. trees that border that, um, I guess, easterly lot line. Okie doke. So those are all pretty much straightforward. So the, the, the bigger issue is whether or not to provide the applicant a waiver um, for the 15 foot driveway requirement to expand it to 30 feet. Um, and I think as I understand it, if we do not allow the waiver, then he would need to come back with a, a plan redesign to show um, how he's going to either get four cars into those drive into that driveway um, or a different uh, layout plan for the lot that allows for the parking. Um, right. So, um, you know, we could motion to close public hearing. Second. All right. Uh, Carolyn, nobody else has come in the Zoom room at this point. There's no, no. nobody no. out there to speak for or against this application. Correct. There you go, Mr. Kowalski. I guess you did a good job with your butters. They're all they, 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 they've been great in all honesty. I, uh, yep. they, uh, they, they've actually been, been really good. Sure, I'm sure it's going to be a benefit to uh, that building that was there that was built in the 60s that is there. It's going to be a nice improvement. Um, okay, there's been a motion made to close the public hearing and we'll take that roll call again. It's been seconded. There's no discussion at this point. Excuse me, Carolyn, can I ask how do I, my whole screen is filled with the plan and no okay. people. How, uh, <laughs> what, what do so, I do? You can go up to the upper right and there's a to um, exit full screen, I think, um, of your mm -hmm. Zoom. Do you see that? I tried, but I, I couldn't get it. I don't see well, that. Well, are you guys oh, ready? To, are you guys ready to stop sharing? Because I can also, we can stop the sharing. Oh, now yeah. I'm on the top. <laughs> yeah, I think we're ready to stop the screen share. Okay. So I can do that, and then um, you'll get oh, your. Oh, all right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, all the spaces. I know all of you. <laughs> you know. So we'll take a roll call vote on the uh, closing of the public hearing. Uh, Sam Taylor? Aye. All right. Yuri? In favor of closing the public hearing? <laughs> Yuri seems to be frozen. Uh, uh, you guys are in slow motion, George. <laughs> no, you're in slow motion. <laughs> no, oh, look, no. <laughs> but he started like to 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 like this motion. I like him. To... Are you in favor of closing the public hearing? Close. Second. Okay, thank, right? <laughs> thank you, David. Close. Marissa. Yes. Yes. Hello, Melissa. Yes. Jenna. Yes. Okay, and Alan. Uh, yes. Very good. All right, public chairs are closed. Um, so we can't ask the applicant any other questions at this point. Are there any other <clears throat> needed debate? Um, I think the way the motion 
A motion to approve the application would be to um, really be about approving the waiver for a 30 foot driveway. Um, if we were to deny the application, and I'm just talking through this out loud, I could use some help. To, to deny, if we voted to not approve the application, would be saying to the applicant that he needs to stay within the 15 feet um, driveway. So just with one clarification, so this is also site plan for the size of the project. It's over 2,000 square feet, um, actually closer to 5,000. So there's sort of two site plan components. So you could approve the site plan, but with let's say no, not a 15 foot wide curb cut, or you could approve okay. the whole thing. And then just for, again, for clarification's sake, we have one full member who is absent. So, and we have two associate members who um, are participating. We would count one vote. So you might want to determine which associate member, and that would either be Jana White or David Whitehill as associate members could step in and vote for the absent full member. Thank you, Carolyn, <laughs> for being here tonight. Okay, Jana and David, rock, paper, scissors, or <laughs> Jana, Jana, Jana has a little bit more seniority, so why don't we at this point in time give her that nod to, for her vote today. Is that all right, David? I think, I have a feeling my vote would be the same as hers, so I'm fine with that. Okay, very good. Thanks. So, and I like the way that Carolyn laid that out. We could approve the site plan approval for the plot um, without the 30 foot waiver, or we could, oh man. Carolyn, do that one more time for me. I'm a little slow in Zoom. Yeah, <laughs> you could approve the site plan for the project. So to a two family structure um, on this property, but not approve the curb cut, so say that it has to be a 15 foot uh, wide curb cut. Um, and that would require a revision of plans that you'd probably want to look at, but you could say that, um, um, or they could just, you know, they could come back with a plan that doesn't necessarily have to be a full blown amendment, but that you would bring it, they, the applicant would bring it to a meeting um, for you all to review. Um, or you could approve the whole thing as presented. Okay, thank you. So then hearing no other discussion, is there anyone who would like to work through that motion? Uh, I would uh, move, I would move to approve the, the new uh, two family, but with a maximum of a 15 foot wide curb opening. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded, and this is... Who was the second? Sorry, I didn't quite hear that. Okay, Jana? Thanks. Sorry, to be clear, is that one 15-foot curb cut or two 15-foot curb cuts? Uh, I am proposing one 15-foot cur curb cut, so essentially denying the, the request for the 30-foot. Okay, motion has been made to approve the site plan approval with a 15 foot curb cut. Um, and it's been seconded. So we'll go. So, so I guess just, just a question. So what, it, I guess, what is, what does that no, mean? Mr. Mr. Kowalski. So, so what that means at this point, and I'm sorry, we closed the public hearing, but basically what it means is that we're approving the plan, um, but not with a 30 foot driveway, only with the 15 foot driveway. So it means that you would have to come back and, um, so it's a redesigned plan for how you're going to access the, either the four um, garage doors or a different layout of the parking area. Okay, thank you. So Carolyn, a question that I have is that on, on the, um, the, the, the staff report, these other conditions, do we need to add those to the motion or? Um, I would recommend you do because they relate to um, getting adequate tree protection um, and seeing revised plans. Um, yeah. Okay, so can I am, amend my motion then? Please do, Marissa. 
Okay, so I would um, amend my motion to, to approve the new uh, two family um, with a maximum of 15 foot wide curb opening and also the recommended uh, conditions in the staff report regarding um, there's the four, four bullet points. I would, I would uh, uh, move that we also have those as conditions. Great. And the fifth Second bullet again. point. Thank you, Jenna. The fifth bullet point would just be the recommendation from the DPW about the alignment of the utilities as they wrote in their okay. report. So five, five conditions more or less. Okay, okay. Del, sec seconded by Jana. Um, are there any discussion at this point? Okay, then we'll move to a roll call vote. Uh, for and against the uh, proposed recommendation. Sam? You're muted. Um, so, so the 15 feet allows for, the idea is, is that, I'm just trying to imagine, I understand that you would have to go back to the drawing board, but um, pr principally what that is, is two, that he would have something where it'd be more of like a funnel where it would go like two to four card cards, right? Well, I think that's assuming he keeps the same design. No, I'm I'm assuming okay. he keeps it. I, I get that. I'm, I'm just trying to imagine what 15 feet is versus 30 feet. Like 15, 15 feet allows for two cars to park side by side together and pull out. Correct. We don't need to figure that out for him. Yeah. He can, he I'm figuring it out for me. So Sam, this is when we are supposed to discuss this before we call the roll. Um, so he, he's going to come back to us with revised plans for this plot. Yeah. I unless I, I just, just to clarify again, part of the discussion, sorry. Unless, um, as Sam was suggesting, it was narrowed down to a funnel and you could still maybe um, create the two, the double, double, Two car garage next to each other with a narrower curb opening, then that wouldn't necessarily change the site plan at all. But there are many, any different number of ways that might that might be addressed. So you don't necessarily have to figure that out now. Okay. Okay. So with the motion on the floor. Um, Sam, how would you like to vote on it? Well, uh, I guess I would, I'm going to vote against. I would vote to approve his, his plan. You'll vote to approve. Okay, you're in favor of the motion. You no. Right? No, 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 no. I would not. be okay with a 30 foot structure. So, so I don't you don't approve okay. the motion. So you're against the motion. Yes. Okay. Yuri? Against. You're against the motion also, okay. Um, Marissa. <clears throat> uh, aye, yes. Aye. Um, Melissa. Yes. Jana. Yes. Okay, and we're gonna skip David, and then George would vote in favor of that also. So that's four in favor, two against. Wait, did we miss someone? Where did Alan go? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Alan. Alan? Alan? Uh, I think we lost him. I'm not sure I saw him. lost him to the Zoom world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's not waiting. Okay, so then that would be... Um, I don't... I didn't see where he left. Um, so... Um, but I'm the majority sure. already approved, right? Right. I just so think, it doesn't yeah. matter at this point. Right. If that's a pro so approved the motion. Put him down as an abstention. Just put it present. disappear from the screen. Yeah. Does that give the vote back to David? Does it matter? Yeah, I mean that's that was my question. Um, but I guess um you know, I leave that up to you. Right now I have, I have 
uh, four to two. So, four to two. Yeah, I mean that's a decision. So you have a majority. Well, yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so regardless of how he would have voted or how David would right. have voted, it would still be the um, voting it in favor of the motion. Right. Right. All right. Yes. So, Mr. Kowalski, certainly you can be in touch now with Carolyn Moore and staff at the office, to, and she'll be more than helpful to kind of help you walk through what that means for your next steps. Okay. Um, thank you. All right. We appreciate what you're doing there for the city. I think it's going to end up being a good project at, at, at some point. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right, so we, Planning Board, have uh, two more items of business, little administrative details. Approved. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, you say anything? Um, so the big, uh, probably the most you know you have minutes but then you have the um vote for the um, municipal e-signatures um and i'd be happy to go over that um if you would like i don't know if you got a chance to read that um but basically this was instituted as part of the state of emergency to allow electronic signatures to be um to stand for you know wet signatures uh, we'd already been doing that to some degree anyway with some of the plans, uh, some of the decisions, um, but you formally need to take a vote to allow um, electronic signatures to be used for your decisions. Does anybody see a downside to allowing this? I don't. I'm just wondering, are we approving this in perpetuity or just during this period or what are the terms? um you know um so i think it will be in perpetuity um and in fact who knows how long we will be in, <laughs> in this um date but it also it's sort of a way that we've been moving anyway um you know now the registry of deeds accepts it, you know is is instantly scanning documents and everything is available electronically anyway so um i think it's it's really sort of the step to where we maybe should have already been ironically carolyn i don't remember signing anything in the past eight to 12 months like a site plan or <laughs> Right, because you've authorized me as your agent and Wayne as an agent of the planning board and the Registry of Deeds already has our signatures on record as being accepted as um, certifying on behalf of the planning board. Does this change anything about, I mean, applicants already could file electronically, correct? Right, right. I think this is long overdue. I have a, I have a friend who's a, a, D, a title attorney in, in Maryland, and he has to go to work every day because they don't have that law, and it's crazy. So. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I still have, a, I have a, a Berkshire Superior Court still wants me to go put a stamp on a piece, on an envelope, and mail in everyday proceedings because uh, they won't take anything by email. Or even fax, which not that I have fax machine. So I'm I'm all for all electronic all the time. <laughs> let's let's join the 21st century. Is that the century we're in? <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn, so we need a, a motion with a roll call. Yeah. Oh, motion to approve. I don't have. I cannot read what I have. To uh, oh, to uh, motion to approve. Hold on, I have it here. Um, to approve the provisions under MGL. Chapter 110G. Yeah, let's to approve that. Thank you, Yuri. Is there a second? Jenna seconds it. <clears throat> All right, any more discussion about electronic signatures? All right, we'll do that roll call vote. Sam, you're still in the top left yep. part of my screen. Yes. Yuri? Yes. David? Uh, is Yes. David? Yes. Marissa? Yes. And Melissa? Yes. And Jana? Yes. And George? Yes. Unanimous. 
But yeah, we got it unanimously. Huh? Wow. <clears throat> and then there's a set of minutes that Carolyn forwarded it to us from. Uh, it looks good. April, I look at April twenty third. Almost all of us were present. That was our first Zoom meeting, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was that I could not connect it for whatever reason. Oh right. right. You you weren't there. I spent forty minutes, believe me, <laughs> and I thought I was a silly, <laughs> stupid an old man who cannot deal with the technology. But that was not me. Ah. <laughs> so, is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. All right. Um, Sam, you in favor of these minutes? Uh, 100 percent. 100. Okay, that's a yes. Yuri, you can still vote even though you weren't there because it's a very oh, I can't. I can't. No, you can. Oh, yeah. You're, ex you're accepting them as the record. Oh. Oh, no, I accept, yes. Okay, that's oh, yes. two. David? <laughs> yes. And Marissa? I want to be better than Sam, so I say yes, 110%. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, Anthony, oh. up, Melissa. That's a tough one. I think I'll just go with the yes. Okay, Dana? Yes. And uh, Paula's iPad, are you back? No. Oh, okay, Alan Burton. You know, he is. He was in the waiting room. I'll bring him back. Oh. <laughs> so we can adjourn. <laughs> Paula's iPad. Paula's iPad, huh? Okay. Um, I wasn't paying before, attention, I guess. Sure. Hello, Alan. Good to see you back. His you phone is off. Him? His phone is off. Yeah. Just before we leave, um, Yuri, did you want to say anything about our first hearing? I know that you voted um, against that project up on North Main Street for the second little hop. Yeah, it was more because of the two big trees. But uh -huh. I just want to make a statement. You already won it, so. OK. So you know, I think it's relevant any time when you feel like that and you're voting no, you can kind of say that. Yeah. In advance, I may be voting against this measure because of- Yeah, it was basically because the question I made, and I think David asked that, or somebody else, why I could not move the whole thing further down instead of cut the two trees, just because aesthetically or whatever, it doesn't feel like. Yeah. I don't know, I'd rather stick with the trees. That's my point. Okay. I, I think Thank you. I, I didn't want to get into it with the applicant there, but I think, you know, given our conversations about two family zoning and form based code and things, I think it's interesting to think about how arbitrary some of these setbacks are and how quick we are to just approve a uh, change yeah. the setback. Uh, if, if nobody from a neighbor shows up to complain, you know, there, there's certainly nothing magical about 15 feet or 10 feet or anything. Uh, and it sort of feels right. And uh, so as we move forward into other zoning endeavors, you know, I think that's something to keep in mind. Since you ask, can I ask, can I just tell one thing? Interesting enough that I do not approve that one, but I approved the one on Kingsley Street because I think that makes more sense. Approve that kind of a, then, you know, because I've been there, I've been in Roberto's, that street is packed and, uh, you know, need parking there. So, okay. but just to contrast, see how he, Yuri thinks, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Yuri. It's a Brazilian crazy guy, too. <laughs> okay, um, and just a heads up, we do not have any hearings for the 28th. So you can, um, is that before the memorial? We go out of town. We can uh, yeah. schedule a vacation. We can a long book weekend. some travel. That's yeah. right. Okay. <clears throat> So you have a long weekend ahead of you. Um, we may have a hearing for June 11th. I think we might, but I'll keep you posted. You know, I like a meeting like this. Rather go over there in person. <laughs> That's true. You're more relaxed. You can, you know, you can scratch our feet like this without people looking at you. Uh, <laughs> It's I got a lot of my puzzle done last meeting, uh, and <laughs> I, and I, I and not to the detriment, I think, of my attention. Actually, I think it helped. <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn, hey, can I can I ask what happened? 
Uh, 15 minutes ago, everything <laughs> froze up, and then my screen went blank, and then it said I couldn't get on the internet, and I finally, it finally reappeared. Did we vote? We did vote. Alan, I'm sorry about your internet connection. Nothing happened to us on this end of the Zoom really? world. Yeah. Um, so something happened at your house. Um, so yes, we voted. There was a motion made to approve the site plan, but with the 15 feet um, driveway. And it, the motion passed. Two people voted against that motion. Four people voted in favor of it. So okay. even if you if you were available and had voted one way or the other, wouldn't have altered so the uh, the ruling. There was there was no point in you sabotaging my internet service. <laughs> <laughs> Not this time, but keep it in mind the rustage may be behind something. <laughs> very very quickly, I wanted to ask Carolyn. Two, first of all, I wanted to ask the uh, committee. Um, have folks are are you getting used to looking at the um, online plans and applications mm -hmm. that are up on the the planning board files, the planning office files? Okay, that's what I've been doing already uh, in preference over the paper. Okay, and I did notice. I mean, George let me know that the links were not um, the way I was. Saving the um, links in my staff report to PDF were not were dropping. They were getting dropped in the PDF process. So um, I just have to use an alternative um, Adobe tool to do that. So I'll make sure that doesn't happen in the future, but there's always a second way into the Laserfiche files. Um, so, but don't hesitate to let me know if you aren't getting you know, access to those documents. David, I was just going to say I would think it would be helpful. Um, like, I mean, similar to Marissa, I've been doing, you know online for a while, but because of there are there is a whole conversation between you and the applicants before. I'm not even thinking about us. I'm more thinking about uh, people from the public who might go in there and just see. Um, it might be better to put. I don't know if there's some naming convention or like, a, or maybe there already is something like this, like a table of contents in each of the folder. Because it's sometimes unclear, like what's you look at a site plan for a while and you realize, oh, there's a more recent one. You know, yeah. There's a few versions of things, or if there could be a folder for stuff that's obsolete, because it's been overridden by a new version or something like that. Yeah. Could be helpful. Um. Sure. I know that. Um. Many times there's a date um, attached to it, but it's not. I mean, you really have to look hard for that right. date. Yeah. And uh, um, but that's a good idea to create sort of a separate folder for updated plans. Um, I know that when people initially upload their documents, the system automatically names them, or at least it comes in with the applicant's name of it. And so oftentimes we are going back and trying to rename everything because in the applicant's mind, they understand what it is, but nobody else in the world does. Yeah. So yeah, that makes sense. The only other issue I have with those files is that I often, if I go on a site visit, I like to have a piece of paper to look at the plot plan or before and the after. And, and I'm still working my way through printing some of those accurately. Um, <clears throat> but I think that's more at this user's end than, than as they're presented up there. I've got to work on that. My other question is um, on both of these sites plans, I was going to ask to see if any members wanted to go together to look at the sites. Um, so Carolyn, I, I'd like to hear from you again. Can we ever do that as a group? Go on a site visit? Or is that an site open visit, meeting law problem? No, site visits are allowed under open meeting. Um, <clears throat> you can only gather information. You cannot converse about what you, you're seeing in terms of evaluating what you're seeing at the site. We have this other issue now, of course, of maintaining six feet of separation or being masked. So, you know, that's another layer of, um, of um, procedure that needs to be followed. Uh, but n there's no problem with uh, more than one or three or five board members going on a group site visit. Um, but again, no discussion about the project 
it's only there to gather information and to better understand what's going on on the property. Okay, all right. So, I, and I leave that to the other members too. If you'd ever like to go on a site plan visit with someone else, you know, I'd be certainly willing to do that. Um, I have some free time on my hand these days. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. Um, any other business questions, items you want to raise before we take a motion to adjourn? Second. No. <laughs> All right. Is there a motion? I think we to... adjourn. Is that Second. Marissa? Yeah. yeah, Marissa. Seconded by Melissa. Oh, Second. oh hey. All right. Seconded by everybody. Thank... Right. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, guys. Wait, you got to do, do a roll call. call. We have roll to do call. a roll call. All right. Adjourn. Okay. Yes. Sam, are you willing to adjourn? Yes. Yuri? Yes. David? Yes. Oh, yes. Marissa? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Dana White? Yes. And Alan Verson? Maybe. <laughs> oh, he's holding <laughs> out! <laughs> yep, yep. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Good, good night, y'all. Be well. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.